Okay, so um, we're just going to plot this out full scale so that the guys can start building the uh, mechanical extensions for the arms. We still have some more design to do, but this just gives them a jump start on the basic scale. Once that design silhouette was set in stone, Wired, Wired loved it, YouTube loved it, we loved it, Legacy loved it. It was time to go into the prototyping phase, and uh, what we like to call the prototyping phase in the creature effects industry, and this started way back on, on Aliens, uh, is we do a garbage bag test. Uh, you don't literally have to use garbage bags, it just means bringing together the idea in three dimensions as quickly as possible using cheap materials just to see that it's possible, that it that it creates the silhouette you're looking for, that the underlying mechanical approach is a sound one. But when you look at what our restrictions are, because we knew that we wanted it to be human operated as it's cosplay, it didn't, we didn't want to have to rely on film trickery, rod puppetry, we couldn't get into hydraulics and pneumatics, it had to be lightweight and movable and you know, so that limits what you can do in a traditional suit. So in my research, and literally at 1.30 at night, I came upon a little organization, a little group of guys in Japan called Skeletonics that had built a pretty amazing, you know, lightweight stick puppet character. But what I was really amazed with was how mobile it was. Um, and what they embraced was uh, pantograph technology. It's basically a slave mechanism that they were using. They had a very good idea, uh, geometrically moving your arm to actually the big arm up there. And uh, it was very, you know, uh, promising that we could make it better performance-wise. What's the range of movement? Where do things start to crash? Lots of questions because it's not a technology that we've used before. So we had to look at their, there wasn't a lot of footage, so we had to reverse engineer, try and figure out what they probably spent months developing and perfecting in a matter of days. We all, including me, questioned this many times along the way, but that's also part of the fun of it. You're like looking at it going, is this really, really, really gonna work in the real world? We've got this thing that works on a videotape, but it's not exactly what we're after. Are we gonna be able to make it better or different enough that it's gonna work for our purposes? So Jim Cundig and Pete Clark got together and they built the first prototypes in, in a matter of two or three days, they put together a working prototype that translated the suit performer's arm movement up two or three feet. We then could determine how far we wanted to go. If you boil it all down, it's what we call a parallelogram mechanism. Basically, the, what it results in is the creature's forearm is always, no matter where it is in space, is always parallel to Bruce's forearm. The first parallelogram is his bicep to the creature's bicep, so when he goes like this, the creature goes like that. And that parallelogram is on a is on a pivot, so he when he swings his arm like this, the creature's bicep does that too. And then the second and third parallelogram are at his elbow. So when he does this, the creature does this, and then the third one is is this move. And it's challenging because you get to these points where like he'll move his arm just a little bit too far and then the whole thing is <laughs> kind of like frozen in one spot and he has to he has to learn how to get himself back out of it. Each suit has its own unique challenges. Stuff like this, the robot suit's more rigid. You've got a you've got an exoskeleton that you're limited to move within, so there's gonna be a lot more lock-off points. In a, in a more fabric-driven suit, you can stretch more. Uh, this is gonna have hard points that I, I'm gonna lock against. There's certain things in the geometry that you always find out are kind of, you can't throw out, you can't cheat, you can't cut a corner. One in this case was having a pivot point in line with his shoulder, because if you don't have it in line with his shoulder and he tries to move, you're basically then moving like three axis points and things start to bind up and bad things start to happen. Okay, yeah, yeah not easy. easy to wax. Not easy. That's his right, better than it again. was? Yes. Okay. And we're not looking at easy. The weight is, is tremendous and it's all above my shoulders. It's anchored to my shoulders, but it's, it's very top heavy. And then I'm on stilts. Well, from the very get-go, having a guy up on stilts and trying to keep 
the suit as light as possible and be at that scale was really the main challenge. Having someone, you know, it's not like you're on set where you get that cut and nobody sees what's happening after the cut and the guy can take a rest and everybody can hold his arms up. So this performer has to be in a crowd, working live, and having everybody see something that could go wrong. You know, it's just, it's refining the frameworks more, you know, kind of um, refining the materials, you know, refining the performance even. You know, it's, it's all a big package and you, you just have to balance it all out. It's kind of like wrapping a Boon Raku around you instead of, you know, being outside of it and performing with it. So the trick then was you have human arms manipulating giant arms right above it. What do we do with the human arms? We could either, you know, minimize them a la Lion King or a stage show where you just dress them in black and then you just ignore it. Or we embrace it as part of a character and dress it out like robotic arms. And that seemed the most logical way to go. So we, we dressed his arms in as small as we could get, but extra appendages. So the end result is this forearm robot with synchronized movement that's really just stunning. And it's such a cliche to say it's nothing that we've seen before, nothing that we've done before, but it's true. We've never done that before. It's one-to-one -one movement and true mirroring, which was remarkable. It was really fun to watch and for Bruce, really fun to operate.